Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I want to put together a quick video on how I read online uh, or how I read on screens. Uh, there's some research and some reports that have gone around the last week or so uh, talking about how students generally prefer to read printed materials. So that means, you know, a textbook or a magazine or a newspaper or a worksheet or a PDF, but basically paper and and printed text on that paper and they'd much rather the research suggests that they would much rather go through and mark up and read on text and read those materials on text um, you know on paper so they can mark up and annotate the printed text and hold that content in their paper and the and the research suggests that they would rather do this online as opposed to a screen and I definitely get that I think part of that is that you know we've been socialized up to this point that reading is a solitary activity that means that I hand a textbook out to you you open up the book you turn to chapter 2 you start reading um, you know for the most part the interaction is between you and, and the text between your eyes and, and the brain and the text and what the author is presenting so it's pretty much a, a solitary activity but we we've, we've learned how to read throughout the decades um, and when we learn we learn with books um, and so it's a it's a big transition to move over to screens. Um, and so there's a certain comf you know like a comfort factor in reading printed text in a book or on paper. So I definitely get that. I see that in my classes all the time. But I think when we think about reading on a screen or reading online, uh, I think there's two different challenges here. I think that we're conflating a couple different things and, and we're confusing ourselves in the process. So yes, we could think about picking up a book, a printed book, opening up the pages and reading print on uh, on a page. Um, but I, I think we're we're conflating a couple different things. I think we're not paying attention to what reading on a screen um, should be, and then also reading on a on a screen could be. Um, so the should be side of things, um, you know, what we're one of the things that we look at is. I view reading online most times as online reading comprehension. Now I have other videos and other pieces all about this, um, but online reading comprehension is basically, from my point of view, questioning, locating, evaluating, synthesizing, communicating. And this comes out of work um, that I help do as part of the New Literacies Research Lab at UConn. Um, and there's many more materials, so I'm not going to drill in deep. But for the most part, online reading comprehension is an activity in which you go in for inquiry-based uh, behaviors, you try to answer a question, you go to a search engine, you search through, I'm looking in the search engine results, I'm trying to figure out, okay, which one of these most suits my purpose, I click on the link, and I'm looking in to see if this works or not, if it doesn't, I'll back out, but I'm constantly searching and sifting and trying to make sense of which is the best for me. Um, so this sort of activity really doesn't apply at all to reading a textbook. This doesn't apply at all to opening up to chapter two, finding a specific section that you want to read about, even marking up and annotating. Um, even if you were to have uh, copious notes where you're you're looking at annotations and markups and highlights across multiple texts and saving them in another journal, this doesn't really apply. So online reading comprehension, this version, if we're looking at reading on a screen, um, and this is something they didn't really talk about in the research. This version really, um, this is what online reading comprehension to me should be. Um, you know, it's an active behavior, an active process where you're trying to figure out where is the information and what helps suit my need. Um, so once again, I think we're conflating a bunch of different things. You know, yes, we could uh, think about reading on a screen, but this is what reading comprehension or online reading comprehension or reading on screens to me should be. Um, I think there's also another problem is we're not thinking about what reading on screens could be. Um, and that's a bigger problem. That's a bigger challenge. So typically what will happen is um, in my class we'll, we'll read uh, this book. So this is one of the textbooks I use in one of my classes. Um, you know, and I can have students go out and purchase this test textbook. Um, they can use it in their classroom. Um, you know, I mean, they can have this, bring it in their book bag. They can open it up, mark it up, highlight, annotate, do as they see fit. Um, but then they have the um, textbook 
in their hands. Um, and a lot of students, they prefer using this. They, they would rather see and feel um, and sometimes smell, but that's another talk for another day, the book. Um, and I get that. But part of the challenge here is that this is the way that we are socialized to read. This is the way that we're taught to read. You know, back when you were uh, learning how to read, you were handed a book, you were handed a chapter book or a picture book and said, here you go, get started. And now, for the most part in, in our classrooms, you know, we read to learn. So we, we replicate that process and we go back to what we know and we go back to what we're comfortable with. Um, and so obviously in classes, you know, I ask students to read on a screen. So, I mean, I can order this book and I can have it in my hands, but then I can also have this text on a screen and I can read it on a screen and I can, you know, pull it out on my laptop or a tablet or my mobile device or, or wherever. And I can read this same information on a screen. But the thing is that we've been socialized up to this point to say, okay, I, I have to pick up that textbook in order to help me make sense of it. Um, so I think part of this is we're not thinking about what reading on screens could be. We talked about the should be part, but now this is the could be side of things. We're not thinking about, okay, what are real opportunities and, and what are affordances of this space? So as an example, in my class, I had that same text, and what I do is I'll give the students an electronic copy of it so they can pull up the electronic copy of this piece here. Um, and this is a, a scanned version. You know, they can get an online copy of this as well. Um, so I can go through and I can read this on the screen. But the problem or the challenge in this is a lot of students, um, this is problematic for them, reading off of the screen. Yes, some of this stuff is not as legible as you would like. Um, you can get better qualities, better quality scans of this content. But some students have a problem like searching through and reading this information on the screen because they feel like they don't really have the text, um, you know, because it's not in their hand. Um, and so I, I totally get that. But I think that one of our opportunities in thinking about what it could be is I use a tool um, called hypothesis and I've I have other videos about hypothesis and the, the thing that I like about this is I can have an electronic copy of a text and I can mark up and annotate that text so if I hypothesis will basically give me this overlay of text in the piece and what I can do is as I'm reading I can select a piece of text here and I can mark up or annotate it um, so if I annotate, it's going to pull up a new window. It's going to show me what I've highlighted. Um, and then I can basically uh, type in a note. And I can add tags. And the nice thing is that my tags connect to other things that I have been reading and taking notes about. So I can add in notes. I can add in hyperlinks. And I have videos about this elsewhere. But I can actively take notes on the screen. I can post this to public in my classes. I have students post this to a group so they can see what each other is, is taking notes about and what comments they're making so that they can help each other learn. What I can also do is I can save this only for me. Um, but the nice thing is that I can, you know, save this note here and then I can go back into hypothesis and I can see the notes that I have created. So I can see notes that I've created. I can look at my tags for notes. So I can look across different notes that I have. So I could say, okay, what are different things that I've said, I've taken notes about blockchain about. So then the nice thing is that I'm reading in that text, but I'm also reading across text. So I can sort of keep digital breadcrumbs as I read online. Um, so I mean, that's, that's one opportunity to think about what reading um, could be, you know, and we're thinking about reading on a screen, but what are what are the affordances of the tool? What are things that this space allows me to do that the printed space that this space does not allow me to do? Um, so one is that I can mark up and annotate and read using a tool like Hypothesis. Other people can see what I'm reading. If I want to give them access, I can take tags and notes and annotations and and sort of cross reference those across a lot of different spaces. So that's definitely one thing that I, I use as I read on a screen. Another thing that I use as I read on a screen is Pinboard. Um, now I've been using in the past Evernote, 
Um, I've been reevaluating the different tools that I use to keep notes and track my thinking over time. Hypothesis, for the most part, fills that need. Another tool that I use is Pinboard. Um, and Pinboard, basically, what I can do is I can pull up a, a site. Um, I can, uh, Hypothesis will let me like mark up and annotate the text on a page. But Pinboard, all it does is save my bookmarks. And so if I want to save this, I click my little note, I save it to Pinboard. And what's no, nice is that I can say, okay, online reading, and I could say critical evaluation. Oh, I didn't get it all the way, but I can save that note or that bookmark. And then the nice thing is that these bookmarks are all in one spot. So I've got, I use Pinboard quite a lot. I've got, you know, four and a half, uh, you know, 4,500 bookmarks saved in here. They're all tagged. So I can go back and as I'm reading online, I can save pages. And this fits more into the online reading comprehension side of things. But the nice thing is, I think that there's that opportunity when you read on a screen to start with one text and move o over to other spaces. And keep in mind, this is pulling in the online reading comprehension side of things. Um, there are people that like to read on a screen and, and limit that reading to that PDF on an e-reader or on a screen, and they don't want to skip out to the Internet. You know, and I know there's problems that occur when you skip out online because on all of a sudden you are lost and you're stuck in this wormhole of, you know, taking surveys and Facebook and social media and everything else. Um, so I, I, I get the fact that some people want to read on a screen and not skip over to these other spaces. But for me, what I like is that I can re be reading something and have a question and quickly say, okay, well, what is this person talking to? Or as I'm reading online, I see links that I want to check out later, um, and I want to be able to save those links. Um, so as I'm reading online, another trick that I usually will use is as I'm reading online, I will open in a new tab. And if I open in a new tab, I basically have a new space and I can come back to this later. So as I read online, what I'll usually do is I will open everything in new tabs that I want to check out. That way, when I'm done reading, I can come back to this, quickly skim through and say, yes, this is something that I'm interested in, I want to save later. I can save that thing in Pinboard. Come on. So I can save this in Pinboard and review it later and when i'm done with it i just close it out okay so i can go through and find materials that i'm interested in, and i open them in new tabs if it's something interesting that i want to read later and re review later i will save it in pinboard so i can access it later and i can tag it so once again it's pulling in some of that online reading comprehension but it's it's also leveraging our use of screens so as I read on a screen, um, you know, I, I use some online reading comprehension uh, tools and mindsets. One of the tools that I use in thinking about how what online reading or reading on a screen could be is I use Hypothesis to mark up and annotate text. I also use Pinboard to save bookmarks. And I want to think about how these bookmarks connect with other things and other spaces online. And the last thing that I really use is um, and I've talked about this in the past, I talk about Google Keep. So frequently what I will do is I will, as I read online, I'll have either two screens set up or I will pull over um, a, a new window. So most times when I read, I'll have two screens. And so I'll set this up so that my Google Keep box is there so I can take new notes. So as I'm reading, I'll set it up like this. And the key here is I want to have like two sided notes um, or two column notes or Cornell notes or, or whatever you want to call it. But I want to be able to take notes as I'm reading. Um, so one of the things that I've been interested in lately and trying to figure out more about is e-diplomas. So I've been doing a lot of research about e-diplomas and trying to make more sense of what it is. And so the nice thing is that if I find new things that I want to check out, I can go in and I can see 
that this might be a site that I want to check out and pay more attention to. Um, and what I can do is I can save this into Pinboard. I can mark it up and annotate it using Hypothesis. But a lot of times what I'll do is I'll come into a page that I like and I want to make sure that I save as I write. And this feeds into my writing process. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll basically say, yes, this is something I want to keep and I'm going to use it pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to save this. It's going to go over to Google Keep. Um, and what I can also do is as I'm reading through, I can say, oh, this is an interesting piece of text that I want to think about. So I'll copy it and I can start up a new note and I can paste this in there and I can say e-diploma notes. And so once again, what I'm doing is I'm basically having like two column notes as I read. So I have Google Keep open. I have little notes. I have other videos about Google Keep and how this can plug into uh, Google Doc or in my writing process or note taking. But so I'm, I'm basically using like little digital post-it notes to save ideas as I read online. Um, and so as I read, what I'll do is I'll find things I want to save. I might either quickly save a website if I want to link to it or I'll save a note from the website. So once again, we're thinking about reading on a screen um, and thinking about what reading on a screen could be or should be. Um, the should be side of things for me starts with online reading comprehension. Yes, I can just take a, a piece of text. I can take a book and I can just pull it up on my screen. So I can, this is a PDF. I can pull it up. I can use, um, you know, a uh, HTML reader, I can basically pull up any text on my screen and read it. Um, and if we just look at pulling that text over to a screen, it's not as useful, um, you know, for some people as just having that book that we can hold in our hands. So one side, the should be is the online reading comprehension, like there's more of an active process involved. Um, but if your goal is to just pull over that text to a screen and be able to read and mark up or annotate or just read more deeply on the screen, there's a couple different tools that you can use. One tool that I definitely recommend is Hypothesis. Hypothesis exists in a, in a browser. Um, you can pull in those PDFs or the Word docs or the eBooks um, into a, a, you know, the, the browser and read and annotate and mark up there. Another tool that I use is a bookmarking tool so I can save links as I'm reading. Um, as I'm reading through the document, if I see things that are interesting, links that are online, I'll save it in Pinboard or another tool like that. Um, and last but not least, one of the things that I also use is Google Keep. And that's primarily as like a digital post-it note. So as I'm reading, I can sort of have it off to the side, take quick notes, and then use those notes and my mindset is I know that I'm mostly going to use these notes as I'm reading uh, for the purpose of writing later. So I'm going to think about writing up blog posts. Um, and once again, that's my thinking about uh, screen reading, trying to make sense of what screen reading might be or, or screen reading, <laughs> what it could be or what it should be. Um, and I think that we need to think more deeply about the ways in which we should be reading on screens and also... Um, what opportunities or what things we should be doing with uh, or could be doing with reading on a screen that we're not currently doing. Um, hopefully this helps you out. Um, I have all of these materials and then some up on my website um, so you can research everything there. Uh, my blog has most of my, uh, not most, all of my writings and thoughts about these different processes. So feel free to go dig in more and see what I have there. Um, I'm starting to build up this video channel, um, this YouTube channel, and I linked it to my main website so that you can see some of the content there and see what I'm doing. Um, and by all means, you can head right back to my YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what I'm getting right, what I'm getting wrong. Tell me when I butcher different pieces of the text as I get uh, through the video. And by all means, if you want to stay up to date and stay in contact with me, subscribe to my newsletter um, and I'll share more of this uh, content there. So once again, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully this helped you out. Have a great rest of the day.